it was around September 2021 I, I started getting into Astro. I really liked it. I instantly resonated with um, their, their vision. Is it okay if I build it and PR it in? And that was my first PR into Astro. I got a message of Fred saying, hey, um, you do so much work for us with some, some examples of what I did. And he said, like, hey, do you want to be a maintainer? Is that okay with you? And of course, I, I accepted. <laughs> of course, I said yes. Welcome everyone to a new episode of Coffee with Developers. Today with Elian. He is a software engineer at Vbridge and a newly appointed Astro maintainer. Welcome Elian. How are you doing? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. Very good. Thanks for asking. Um, I'm excited to be here. How are you, Mark? I'm amazing. I have been looking forward to to like hear more about Astro, especially because I've been uh, tinkering with it a little bit lately. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, before we start uh, talking about Astro, um, I mentioned you, you work as a software engineer at VBridge. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit in, in short, in one or two sentences, what is VBridge and what do you do there for work? Okay, uh, well, VBridge is a cloud architecture company um, based in Belgium. It's a small company. We're about six or seven people. Um, and we do custom app development and custom cloud architecting solutions uh, for clients, um, which are basically uh, can be apps, can be uh, web shops, um, things that aren't the basic Vercel websites. For instance, um, peak traffic, um, we have to make sure DDoS attacks are, are handled well and security is uh, a, high, a high standpoint of ours. Um, and I tend to... Um, maintain the code of the application and make it work uh, with cloud native components. That's kind of what I do. Okay, nice. Very interesting. But uh, let's now get to the other part, which is uh, which I'm really excited about to talk with you about, which is uh, you just recently, I don't know, last week, two weeks ago? Uh, yeah, appointed. last week, Monday. Last week, Monday. So like a little bit more than a, a week ago, uh, a new team member of a new maintainer of Astro. Uh, can you first, for our audience, uh, tell us a little bit what Astro is? Okay. Um, it's actually a very simple answer. Astro is a meta framework which focuses on static content websites, um, basically content-driven websites. So it, it, um, it makes sure your SEO can be done right. Um, it focuses on writing and authoring content. Um, but we're also looking into applications more lately. And there's also, of course, the big point of like framework agnostic um, stuff. So you can bring in your own front end framework upon Astro. Oh, yeah. As far as I know, that you can also already do, right, with the, with the islands, like bring components. Of course. That's, a, that's another part. Yeah, of course. Um, Astro is, is based on an island architecture, um, which means that you can hydrate or dehydrate your components um, in in your own choosing, so to your own liking. You can choose this button, should she JavaScript, this uh, component shouldn't because it's just static content. And because of that, you're just shipping basic HTML with like the only little bit of JavaScript that you really need. Okay, nice. So basically, if I don't have any interaction on my website, there's no JavaScript shipped to the front end? Yeah, exactly. And you can do it even better. You can also like, uh, we call them client directives, which um, which are the parts where you can um, specify how you want to hydrate your website or when you want to hydrate your website. Um, by hydration, I mean shipping JavaScript to your website. Uh, for instance, you might have a mobile menu button, but you only want to show it um, when the screen is actually in a mobile size. So yeah. you won't need the JavaScript to be shipped if the user is on a desktop. Um, so then you can use the client media directive, which um, hydrates your component when a given media requirements, uh, media query requirements is met. Um, so there is a lot of cool stuff to, to do. Nice. And uh, if I add like a, a front end framework like uh, Tailwind, uh, does it only ship the CSS there, or is there all, is there some uh, JavaScript also shipped to the front? No, well, in, in the case of Tailwind specifically, it's it's pure CSS. But for instance, mm -hmm. you can also use React upon Astro uh, or with Astro. 
Um, and then you can even uh, still choose to not ship JavaScript. Then the compiler will just build everything at build time um, and will then just uh, compile it down to static HTML and ship that to the user instead of um, the client library of React. Wow, that's cool. So just unless you have an, an interaction, like a button or something, uh, yeah. you actually should. Okay, that's that's nice because probably most of the stuff that's shipped to the browser nowadays is JavaScript. So exactly. You have like a exactly. markup of like uh, five lines of code of HTML code, and then you have exactly. And that's the point that that Astro is trying to solve. For instance, like for SEO purposes, um, yeah. it's not so great to just ship JavaScript because your your browser, your HTML will just be empty and it's it's difficult to crawl. Whereas with Astro, all your headers can be rendered statically. Um, so the browser will can, well, not the browser, but like the crawler of Google, for instance, will um, get easy access to, to all the content that's on your website. So yeah, so now that we know a little bit what Astro is, um, how did you, oh, let's say, when did you get involved into the Astro project? That's some time ago already. It was, um, I think, um, I was writing, writing an article about this the other day, so I know the exact date I did my first PR. Um, but it was around September 2021 I, I started getting into Astro. Um, I was writing an essay at that time at school. I was still at university. Um, and I was writing an essay about like um, meta frameworks and specifically Gemstack frameworks, um, which already tended to um, ship less JavaScript. So I was very interested in that topic. Um, and then I came across this very little website. Um, there was some hype on Twitter, but not that much. Um, and their website was basically a very simple, um, simple text. Um, but if you looked into the, the source code, there was a Discord link. So I joined the Discord, asked some questions. There was not a lot of people in the Discord at that time, um, which made it very easy to ask questions if you were using Astro. Um, Astro wasn't production ready at the time. It was like version 0 0.014. Um, so um, I, I started building my own website with it just to try it out and to, to make my essay better. And I really liked it. I instantly resonated with um, their, their vision on not shipping unneeded JavaScript, but only shipping the parts you needed and still being able to use, for instance, um, Vue or React upon it. Um, so that was very cool. Um, and then um, I was browsing at their website and I noticed that there wasn't a 404 page. And then I just sent a message in Discord saying, hey, I saw you don't have a 404 website on your uh, 404 page on your website. Is it okay if I build it and PR it in? And that was my first PR into Astro. And from there, I just like went with it. Every time there, I saw a small mistake, I asked, hey, can I fix it? Um, to the point that... Um, they said, hey, you don't have to ask it anymore. Just like make it, um, put it in a PR, and then we'll see if it, if, if it fits. Um, go ahead and, and make Astro the best you can. So I instantly resonated with it. I, I, I wanted to build it out. I, I really thought it was a fun project. It was a beautiful project. Uh, it resonated with me. And then there was, um, a couple of months later, a small meetup here in Belgium, um, in Ghent. Um, and I wrote my first ever CFP and just sent it in and they accepted. So it was a lightning talk of like seven minutes um, explaining the basics of Astro. So then I started preparing a talk. That was my first talk ever. Um, first, well, meetup talk. Um, and from there, yeah, the, I, I started talking with the team, for instance, about what's the direction that Astro is taking because I wanted to include it in my slides. And um, yeah, from there, I just keep kept talking to them. Uh, so yeah. That's where I am. <laughs> nice. And then um, to become a maintainer, did this also happen that naturally? Did they just reach out, out to you like, hey, Alien, you do so much. You want to join us? Yeah, exactly. Um, so the, the nomination, well, Astro is a complete, um, how do you call it, uh, democracy. Um, so you can't actually apply for, well, you can apply for a job at the Astro technology company, but you can't apply for uh, roles inside of Astro. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be nominated by someone who has that role already. Um, so you don't have a, have a say in it. Um, so then I was nominated and voted in as a, as a maintainer. And then I got a message of Fred saying, hey, um, you do so much work for us with some, some examples of what I did. And he said, like, hey, do you want to be a maintainer? Is that okay with you? 
And of course, I accepted. <laughs> of course, I said yes. Oh, very exciting. Very exciting. All right, let, let's come back to, uh, to Astro again. What is your favorite feature about Astro and how, how does it set itself apart from other frameworks? Well, there are a couple of things that, that, that resonate with me. Of, of course, there is the, the big island thing, which is, of course is awesome and, and is a big use case of Astro. But of course, it's also the, the easy, the easy um, learning curve, which is awesome and the, the high or, or the best developer experience they can deliver. Um, they have beautiful CLI, which works great. Um, they put a lot of work in it. Um, so it, it tends to feel like HTML superpowers, which is so awesome to me. Awesome. You just mentioned uh, the learning curve. That would have been my next question um, to someone that's like new to web development, um, like let's say no experience in React or view maybe just some JavaScript. Mm -hmm. What's the experience like? How long does it take until you can go like, hey, I can build a website in Astro? I, I think it can be like literal in, in 30 minutes. Um, well, if you know HTML, and you know the basics of CSS, you can build a website in Astro because like I mentioned, it, it's it's basically HTML and superpowers. Um, you have to learn some JSX in between, but we have like great tutorials over on the docs website. We have like a real step, a step through step guide that, that helps you understand the concepts and help you write your content in Astro and helps you learn the syntax. Um, and of course, if you have the, the knowledge already of a framework, it's very simple to pour another website over because you can just copy and paste your, for instance, React components over to Astro without losing uh, performance. Wow, that's that's super cool. Uh, I, I did the, the Astro in the docs. There is this uh, walkthrough, and it tells you mm -hmm. do this, do that. Yeah. It's for 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 me as who who already knows a lot of, uh, about uh, web development. It's a little bit slow, but I think that's the point be to yeah. show someone that doesn't know, but it's like, okay, next, 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 next. And then it's like, okay, this is very cool. Yeah. Uh, but one, you, if you go through that, I, I can understand that it's, it's a little bit slow, but it's of course meant to like introduce yeah. you step-by-step step to every concept. And if yeah. you just click through it, you'll also get the points because the concepts aren't anything really new. Um, they exist in other frameworks as well. Yeah, that's what that's what I was going to say. That it's perfect for beginners uh, to, to just like if if there's something you don't know, like it, it really explains it. Even if, if it's very basic, which I think nowadays frameworks or whatever tools libraries that come out, uh, they, they really fail at grabbing the beginners. Right, you sort of have to have some sort of of knowledge beforehand. But Astro really goes to like if you don't know what this is. Don't worry about it. We are we have all started somewhere, and this is like this is a JavaScript. Uh, uh, this is an HTML exactly. tag, and this is how this works. And so it's very step by step, and I really like the experience. Yeah, we put uh, a lot it. of work into that, and also I, I do have the advantage of of talking oh. about Astro sometimes at conferences. So I do get a lot of questions from beginners as well. So I write those questions down, and then I see if I can make something better in the docs, or I can write. We, we have a new concept. Well, it's not a new concept, but we have this concept called recipes in the documentation, um, which we use um, to to guide someone through one very specific thing. For instance, that can be using Uno CSS in Astro, and then we have a whole guide on just using that. Or maybe it can be um, using a Vite plugin into Astro, and that we have a completely guide for that. Nice. So we try to to make it as easily accessible for everyone. Yeah. Also adding, uh, like for example, adding Tailwind, it's like one command and it adds the dependencies, it adds yeah. uh, whatever it needs to add into the code. It already, it's like yeah. one command and done, right? Exactly, and that's that's the amazing developer experience I was talking about earlier. Yeah. It's, it's so simple and it, it can be just like Astro add React, Astro add view, and you can use them all. Uh, it's very easy. Nice. People update the config and stuff, yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah, one thing that I sort of not struggle with, but it's like a little bit an eyesore sometimes is the conditional rendering. When I go like if yeah. like it's open or whatever, and then you have to do the, the ampersands and then you render the, the J, is it JSX? Uh, well, it's JSX like, yeah. Yeah, 
Um, yeah, so I know, I know. I struggle with that sometimes too. It, it's it's like in React. It doesn't make sense if you're if you're coming from something like Vue because in Vue you use the it, v if v else, which yeah, exactly. tends to make a lot of sense. But I don't remember who it was that responded to. Maybe it was even you. I don't remember that. Like, oh, maybe someone is working on this, and I I'm really looking forward to someone implementing a, a sort of VIF uh, equivalent to um, to make the, the code a little bit more beautiful because in itself it's it, it, it's, it would be the only thing that isn't uh, on point. Well, it depends. You you have a couple of, of ways to go about it. You could always just use, for instance, Vue if you like the conditional rendering there a lot more. Um, that's the awesome part of it. But also I, I think that's a pain point as well. Yeah. So I do understand your point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, now that I talked about something, one thing that I don't like about it, what is your favorite thing about Astro? Hmm. Well, it's like my favorite feature. I, I just love the, the developer experience. Um, but outside of just Astro, it's the community. Astro has an awesome, friendly community. Um, I talk to a lot of people in the Astro Discord. Um, they're all super friendly. They're also very helpful. We have a whole team of like um, support people who just are there in the Discord every day, checking out new issues, checking um, if they can be of help somewhere, if they should change something in documentation or something. I think that's uh, one of my favorite things about Astro in, in general. This is funny because it's the same answer I give when uh, someone asks me, oh, what do you like about Vue so much? And oh, I'm but like, I'm, yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of open source frameworks and, and the overall open source world is very friendly. So you talked about or we talked about the, the learning experience. It's great, but uh, people can start in the docs, uh, which I talked about. But can you share with us if there are plans to create uh, video courses? Because some people uh, prefer video courses over docs. Um, yeah, I can. So there are a couple of tutorials already out there, which are not official, but um, they are out there. Um, for instance, uh, Learning with Jason has some um, very good tutorials as well. Um, but I can share, I guess, that I'm working on um, some tutorials, video tutorials as well. Um, also like short form tutorials. So maybe we'll, we, we're getting into um, something like YouTube Shorts. Um, we're still trying stuff out, um, but there will be definitely some um, in the near future. Nice. Looking forward to that one. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and now just for fun, um, if you could add one dream feature to Astro, what would it be and why? Yeah, well, for me personally, I think it would be authentication. The authentication process right now is a little bit clunky. We don't have um, very official support for um, authentication, like, mm -hmm. for instance, Next.js does. Um, and I think we should... Um, but still, it's it's kind of difficult because Astro is mainly for content-driven websites, which are mm -hmm. mostly not really related to authentication. Um, but still, if you want an admin panel, for instance, uh, without using a CMS, um, you need authentication. So I think that's something that we have to work on in the future. What's like the most uh, common use case? It's probably like a website or a blog or yeah, something. Yeah, right? it tends to be mostly marketing websites or personal blogs. Um, yeah, because they okay, have to yeah. be high, highly uh, content driven and they take advantage of SEO as well. Yeah, exactly. All right. So uh, you talked about Astro at Vue.js Amsterdam. And was this your first time speaking at such a large audience? Yeah, in front of such a large audience, yeah, it was for sure. There were like, what, 1,200 people? Yeah, exactly. A lot of people. Um, so it was very um, impressive to be there. Um, but it was amazing. It was an amazing experience. Everyone was so friendly. I got to meet a lot of cool people. For instance, you were there. Um, Sebrun uh, was there from Belgium as well. Um, Evan Yu was there, what, what, yeah, which was very cool to meet him. And Fred Anthony. was there. Fred was there as well. Yeah, that's true. I almost forgot. Yeah, that's where actually I met Fred for the first time in person. Um, so yeah, it was a very cool experience. I loved it. Awesome. And uh, 
can you give us uh, like some uh, advice or like something you would uh, tell someone else that also wants to become a speaker, where to start, how to like even get accepted and so on? Yeah, it's it's actually it's different. It's different for everyone, of course. Um, but for me, the entry point is always like joining the community. Just asking, hey, can I help out somewhere? Is there some PR I can do? Um, most of frameworks and overall open source repos have um, good first issue labels or help wanted labels. Um, if you're looking into helping something out, you can always filter on that label. Um, I used it with Astro to, to get a couple of things done in the start. Um, and then it's just like all networking, building a network, building a community, um, responding to messages and, and helping other people out. Um, I have learned so much from helping other people out and seeing like, hey, wait, I can do this this way in my website as well. This is actually better. So you, you learn while helping and that's cool. Okay, awesome. So I think uh, our time is up, Elian. Okay. Uh, I want to thank you very much for your time and your no awesome Thanks insights into Astro. Thanks a lot for joining and also everyone that tuned in here watching or listening to this. Uh, thanks a lot and see you in the next episode. Yeah. Bye bye and bye bye, Elian. Bye bye. Thanks for having me. Bye.